oddities of Mother Nature, of outer space, and of mankind. Our world can be a strange place, but in this episode, are we delivering only cold hard facts? Or are we twisting the truth and reality with made-up tales? It's time for you to decide between what's fact or fiction. The line that divides the factual from the unreal has long since blurred. The tales we once thought fantastical now implanted as true. To decipher verity from the imagined, you must break from the ordinary and consider a universe where the outlandish prevails. Can you expand your mind to see beyond our perceived reality? Can you decide what's fact or fiction? Our first tale tonight is one that even we would consider odd. One revolving around a main highway and a very interesting problem for drivers that seemed to pop up out of nowhere. It was an issue that even the Rhode Island Department of Transportation wasn't sure how to address. US 44 was one of the more heavily traveled roads of the state, running 26 miles right into Putnam, Connecticut. At first, DOT officials thought it could ignore the issue and it would resolve itself. But as it persisted over the span of several days, there was no avoiding it any longer. So, on an otherwise quiet Thursday morning, a DOT employee issued the alert. US 44, Slippery Road. It was odd, considering even in the rain, the DOT never warned of the slippery conditions but after a brief statement, somehow read in the most stoic of tones, the public knew what had befallen their part of the world. Caterpillars, thousands of them migrating from one side of the road to the other for reasons nobody really seemed to know or truly understand. It was an unpleasant couple of days, especially when the rains fell. The squashed little bodies of the fuzzy creatures stained the road yellow. As they rotted, the late spring rains picked up the stench from their corpses and filtered the unpleasant odor through the air. Worst of all, US-44 was a hazard as the rains came. The tiny dead bodies that littered the road became like ice, causing cars to swerve and skid along a road that, before then, was a pleasant drive. There was no fixing it, just enduring, and endure the village of Gloucester did. When locals grew concerned as to whether or not it was going to be a permanent issue, the Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry was sure to chime in and provide some comfort. It would take a few weeks, but eventually the migrating caterpillars, who were simply looking for food, would eventually vanish. Despite the hazardous roadway, incidents remained minimal, and once the Great Caterpillar Infestation of 2016 cleared up in a little under a month after it started, the ordeal became a favorite story among the locals. Much like how some regions have the blizzard of whatever year, the people of Gloucester had the Caterpillar Infestation of 2016. Nadim Jahaya wanted nothing more than for his shift at the always dead Route 7 convenience store to end. But this slow night would eventually get interesting when a customer he'd never seen before stopped in with a strange story to tell. The clock refused to move and Nadim's patience was slowly fading. He never understood why Route 7's only business for miles was able to stay open, especially since, during most of his shifts, he was left entertaining himself while catering to the very rare customer. On that too typical Tuesday evening, as the sun dipped beneath the horizon, Nadim got the excitement he was looking for, though it left him more confused and uneasy than entertained. When the rugged man first walked through the door, Nadim thought nothing of his appearance or his presence. It wasn't unusual for truckers to stop in looking for a quick snack or resupply their gallon of coffee. But the strange part was when this man stood at the entrance, glancing around the store. At first, he paid no mind to the store clerk, but eventually spoke to him, 
though his eyes still surveyed the small space. Are you the master of this abode? Nadim hesitated before shrugging his shoulders nervously. Something about the man's voice unsettled him. All he could muster was a quick, I'm sorry? This structure, is it yours? Nadim again answered with hesitation. No, I, I just work here. The man grumbled before finally looking in Nadim's direction, cautiously walking his way toward him. A message for your master. This land is not safe. They will come. Nadim didn't know what to say. When the stranger just stared at him, standing awkwardly close, all he could think to blurt out was, What? The odd man pointed to the sky, his eyes never leaving the deems. They're coming. To harvest. To feed. The young clerk wanted nothing more than to grab his phone and call the police, but he considered how long it would take for a patrol to show up. He'd be dead by then the victim of some rambling old fool who thinks he has a message from the universe beyond. Oh, okay. There was a pause before the man slammed his hand on the counter, startling the clerk. Tell your master, a warning. He slid his dirty fingernails across the counter. Tell him. Without another word, the man stepped away from the counter, let off a succession of loud clicks, and slinked his way out of the store. Nadim didn't want to follow him, but when he was through the door and back outside, he rushed to the door and locked it. When he peered through the large windows of the door, he found the parking lot empty. No sign of the strange man. No car. Nothing. Nadim rushed back to the counter to grab his phone, but when he went to dial 911, the battery had died. He noticed the object on the counter, that shining piece of metal, seemed to be vibrating. It twitched every second, sliding its way across the counter. The closer it seemed to move to Nadim, the more he felt himself grow weary and lightheaded. And then blackness hit him. He didn't know when it happened or how, but when Nadim's eyes opened again, he found himself on the floor of the back room office. In a panic, he rushed to the front and found everything was as he left it, save for his phone and the metallic object. The battery had come to life, and the unusual device had vanished. Not wanting to chance anything and assuming he had been secretly drugged, the dean called the authorities. As he expected, nobody believed his story, especially when security footage showed nothing but a conscious Nadim walking into the back room and lying down on the floor after reacting to nothing that was in the store. Nadim soon found employment closer to a populated area and rarely mentions the incident to anyone, fearing he'll start to make a name for himself. The crazy kid that was visited by the alien. Was Nadim really visited by an otherworldly visitor? Did his imagination get the best of him that boring night? Or are we leading you down a path of deception and lies? While you ponder that, we'll move on to our third and final story of tonight. One about an incredible escape that may even surpass any feat accomplished by Harry Houdini. 19th century Virginia was no place for an African-American woman, but it wasn't like Madeline Shaw had much of a choice in being there. Her decisions weren't hers to make, as her masters, as they were called, oversaw her daily duties and how she lived. In the early 1800s, she was born into slavery, her life already doomed to an existence of servitude. She knew her parents well, but as much as they tried to shield her from the horrors around her, there wasn't anything they could do to prevent the inevitable. At 15 years old, after years of being taught how to work and sew and cook, Madeline was forced to work and follow in the footsteps of her parents. Over time, she married another slave, Samuel Brown, and bore three children. But the glimpse of happiness she shared with them was taken away when the family was separated. After losing her family for a second time, Madeline swore to be a slave no longer, and so she made connections. Henry Smith was a free black man, someone that Madeline could trust with her life, and so she did. The white shoemaker, Theodore McKim, 
she trusted less, even though he had been sympathetic to the slaves for as long as she could remember. Behind the scenes, the Pennsylvania Anti-Slavery Society worked to escort Madeline. It was this network of people that helped Madeline escape to her freedom. To get out of work the day of her escape, she knew she'd have to be severely injured. So, using sulfuric acid, she burned her hand to the bone a small price to pay for freedom. Via the Adams Express Company, Madeline had herself packed into a crate and mailed to a free state. So many things could have gone wrong while they planned and executed her escape, but it worked. In a box just barely big enough to fit her small frame, Madeline crossed state lines until she was safe in Pennsylvania. Madeline's incredible plan ultimately worked. She became a free woman, an abolitionist speaker, and lived until she was in her 80s, an impressive feat for the time period. So many things seem to go against logic with this story. But does that mean the escape of Madeline Shaw is absolutely false? We know you're dying to know, so let's get on with the reveal. Are you ready to find out if you can decipher between fact or fiction? Let's look back at tonight's three stories and find out which were born from reality and which were fabrications of the imagination. For our first story, we experienced a caterpillar infestation that sounds more like a B-horror movie than reality. But do you think it happened? If so, then maybe you remember the Blue Hill, Maine incident of the same nature. A story broke in early June 2018 about hazardous road conditions in the small main town caused by wandering forest tent caterpillars. Residents dealt with a slippery Route 15 caused by the squashed bugs. Our second story follows Nadine Johaya, a young man caught up in a strange encounter in the middle of nowhere. Did the poor store clerk suffer a strange blackout after a stranger's visit? Or do you think we've thrown this one together ourselves? If you think the latter, then you're quite intuitive. While crazy stories like this pop up in sleepy towns, this one was a creation of our own imaginations. Finally, we have the incredible escape of Madeline Shaw. It almost reads like a movie plot but this is actually the real tale of Henry Box Brown. Much like Shaw, Brown was born into slavery, and when he had his own family, they were taken from him and sent to a different slave owner. With the help of James C.A. Smith, the free black man, and Samuel A. Smith, the shoemaker, Brown escaped Virginia into Pennsylvania in the safety of a crate. How well did you do in tonight's video? Did you look past the deception of our world and define the off-blurred line that struggles to separate lies from the truth? Let us know in the comment section below. And should you find the urge to test your perceptions again, be sure to subscribe and join us next time when we ask you to decide what's fact or fiction.